Every single one of these videos that you are about to see right now were created with OpenAI's new AI video model named Sora. I usually don't make these AI news update videos, but this sneak peek of OpenAI's new model had me feeling like I just found ChatGPT for the first time again. This AI model, Sora, that OpenAI has been working on can create AI videos from a single text prompt. So just like ChatGPT can generate content from one of your prompts, or just like Midjourney can create a picture from one prompt, or Dolly3 can create a picture from a prompt, this Sora model can create up to one minute of footage from a single prompt. These are all AI generated videos, and to be honest, it looks way too good to be true. In this video, I just want to dive into the technical report of Sora, and I also just want to show you some of the amazing examples that come along with it, because this is absolutely insane. From a video editor perspective, I've been editing videos for six years, I've been filming videos for a long time, and as a YouTube creator myself, it does make me a little nervous as I see the stuff starting to come out because we are getting one step closer to having what you're seeing right now basically be an AI video. It's almost getting that good. It's crazy how fast we've come in only a year and just to know that this technology is only going to get better from here on out is pretty scary when you start to think about it, but it's also fun and invigorating at the same time. So let me dive into OpenAI's report on this and go over a few of the key important factors of this new AI model, Sora. Now this AI model is not yet released to the public, but it's having me very excited for when it is released. I cannot wait to use this. I just wanted to bring this to you to show you what OpenAI has been working on and all of the crazy stuff that's coming in the future. As you can see, we have Sora here creating video from text. So as I was saying, just like ChatGPT or Midjourney, you're going to be able to type in a prompt. So let me show you a quick example of how that works. Now this first video I'm about to play is completely generated with Sora and it's absolutely mind blowing how realistic and how cinematic and almost Hollywood like film production that the quality of this video is. Now they generated this from a one sentence prompt and I'm going to play this now. And as you can see, it, the shots are just amazing. The clarity is on point. It's very cinematic from all of the movements and the eyes and the hand grabbing this thing right here. Everything about it leaves me speechless. This is the prompt they used in order to generate this video. A movie trailer featuring the adventures of the 30-year-old spaceman wearing a red wool knitted motorcycle helmet, blue sky, salt desert, cinematic style shot on a 35mm film, and vivid colors. That's all they had to type in to generate this insane movie-like trailer and the quality of it is just immaculate. Here's another video that you're seeing right here. And the only thing they typed in in order to get this drone shot was historical footage of California during the gold rush. That's all they had to type in for this. And the film grain, the people walking, the buildings, the mountains, everything looks just amazing here. This is an extreme up close of a 24 year old woman's eye blinking. And then there's some more to the prompt, but just look how realistic and insane everything is. The way it focuses in on the eye, the reflection in the eye. Every little detail here is being taken into account. Sora isn't only good at doing these realistic videos, but it can also do animation styled videos as well from a single prompt. As you can see, we have this video right here and everything about it is amazing. The expressions, the smoothness of everything and how they've put this into a video just absolutely blows my mind. And I know I keep saying that it's mind blowing, but considering the fact that this was generated from a single prompt in Sora, and how smooth everything is and the expressions and just the flowing of everything. It's advancing so quick that it's just amazing to watch. Now there are loads and loads of examples here on the website and I've looked through all of them. This is another insane example. All the prompt says is a young man at his 20s is sitting on a piece of cloud in the sky reading a book and it generates this amazing shot. Now when you start reading the technical report, you come across some very interesting stuff that seems a little complicated, but it's also fun to look into. So I'll leave a link in the description to that. I highly recommend going and checking it out. But there's just a few things that I want to go over that I thought were interesting. The section, turning visual data into patches, it says we take inspiration from large language models and large language models are things like chat GPT. And this is the interesting part of this paragraph that I wanted to share. It says, whereas LLMs have text tokens, Sora has visual patches. And from OpenAI, they say patches are a highly scalable and effective representation for training generative models on diverse types of videos and images. And they give a little visual representation to show how that works. 
This is another section I thought was very cool, scaling transformers for video generation. It says, importantly, Sora is a diffusion transformers, and transformers have demonstrated remarkable scaling properties across a variety of domains, including language modeling, computer vision, and image generation. And below here, you can see these three videos as the training is progressing. So this is the base compute, this is 4X compute here in the middle, and this is 16X compute. So as you can see, they get dramatically better. It says they are currently working on improving framing and composition, and it's already gotten better. Just take a look at this AI video that Sora generated. I don't understand how this is not real. If you're not looking for AI here, you're not going to find it. The way that the water comes above the camera, this broken ship in the background, the movement of everything. I mean, if you look close, you can tell, but this is quite spectacular that Sora has been able to achieve this. This is another very cool feature that Sora will have as well. You can animate Dolly images. So if you provide an image and a prompt input, you can create videos based on Dolly 2 and Dolly 3 images. So as you can see, this image was uploaded and it says here, a Shiba Inu dog wearing a beret and a black turtleneck. And as you can see, Sora actually animated the image that was uploaded with that same exact dog. So you can kind of get a workflow going, especially if you have images you already like in Dolly 3. Once Sora releases, it's going to be able to animate those images very well. This is one example I thought was insane. As you can see on the left here, we have this flat design of these monsters, a diverse family of monsters, as the prompt says. And Sora animated it to do this. I just think about how long this would have taken in order to actually animate this as an animator to create all the design elements. And of course, it's not perfect, but with a little bit of manipulating, I'm sure that this could be very useful for any graphic designers or any people who aren't a graphic designer that that want animations like this, but don't have to spend hours learning how to create every element and animation and movements. Sora can do this with a single prompt now from an image, which is very cool. This is another example. They just keep coming, but an image of a realistic cloud that spells Sora. Okay, this was generated in Dali, and then Sora generated this animation of the cloud that says Sora. That's very unique and very, very cool. This is another very cool example here called video to video editing. As you can see, Sora is taking that input video and applying its own environments to it. And we can go in here and we can change it live right here. So if I click into this, I can say, put the video in a space with a rainbow road. And then as you can see, it's now the same video just edited with a rainbow road instead of this basic road. And the car is moving the same. As you can see, it's going under that rock tunnel and now it's going into space. So it's very cool. This is a very exciting feature. Next, let's take a look at emerging simulation capabilities. OpenAI said that they find that video models exhibit a number of interesting emergent capabilities when trained at scale. These capabilities enable Sora to stimulate some aspects of people, animals, environment from the physical world. An example here is 3D consistency. Sora can generate videos with dynamic camera motion. As the camera shifts and rotate, people and scene elements move consistently through three-dimensional space. This is absolutely insane. Let's take a look at this video right here. As you can see, it's keeping that 3D consistency. And although this video isn't the best AI generated video, it's still insane to what we've been able to generate up to this point. The walking, the hand motions, the 3D capabilities, as you can see, the city stays the exact same as the beginning of the video. Just take a look at the bridges, the city staying the exact same. Everything is consistent within this video and it stays that way. Next, let's take a look at interacting with the world. It says Sora can sometimes stimulate actions that affect the state of the world in simple ways. For example, a painter can leave new strokes along a canvas that persist over time, or a man can eat a burger and leave bite marks. As you can see, after this man eats his burger, there are bite marks left on that burger. So after he takes a bite, as you can see, the bite mark is gone just as he took the bite. So that is insane how that is generated with AI. So just like in Mid Journey, how you have the capability to actually pan the camera to view a different part of the image or zoom in, Sora kind of has those same effects that you can do. You can actually extend generated videos. Now that is amazing. It says it's capable of extending videos either forward or backward in time. All of these videos start different from the others, but they all lead to the exact same ending. So I'm going to play this video. And as you can see, these are all different videos of each other. Uh, and they all start from different locations, but they all lead to the exact same ending, which is just insane. Look at that. 
I've never seen anything like it. That's amazing. And it says we can also use this method to extend a video both forward and backward to produce a seamless infinite loop. If I play this video back and I hit play of these two bikers going through this dirt trail in the forest, as you can see, this is just going to be an infinite loop because they've used this forward and backward feature to continue this video. So now we're just looking at a seamless loop of these bikers going through the forest. Now the concerns that would start to arise when something like this comes about is the ethical concerns. How are people going to be using this? Because there will be some people that try to use this for bad, that try to lead to spreading misinformation, which misinformation nowadays is already bad enough. So with this new technology, how bad can it get? You can practically make it look like somebody is doing something that they're absolutely not doing. You can extend videos, you can move backwards in time. You have the ability to create 1080p content that almost looks way too good to be true. And if you don't have it in your mind that you are going to be looking for AI within a video or you're going to be looking for some pixels that seem off in every single video that you watch, Will you really know that you're watching a genuine original video? Or is it going to be generated with AI? These are some of the questions that we start to ask ourselves, you know? For the average person who doesn't really care about AI that much, they're not invested as I am, or as some of you ladies and gentlemen are, when they're scrolling on Facebook or scrolling on YouTube and they come across a video that is as good as some of the videos that we've seen today, what are their thoughts going to be? Are they going to think, oh, this is AI generated, most likely not. They're probably just going to think, oh, this is a regular video. For example, if I saw this video come across my page, I'd be like, oh, it's a really cool shot of some train in Scotland or some steam train somewhere that I'm not really familiar with, you know? But this is an AI generated video. This location isn't real. This train isn't real. So that's when concerns are going to start to arise. Not when people generate things like this for cool shots or try to be creative and get some design elements for a video or web design or whatever it may be. But for when people try to purposely misuse this technology, that's when everything is going to start to become very problematic. And as you can see, OpenAI does have a watermark in the bottom right hand corner, uh, but those can probably be easily cropped out. It's not going to help all that much having a little watermark in the bottom right hand corner in order to tell if a video is AI generated. And this is just the beginning of this stuff. Now that's all I have for this video. If you want me to do a more in-depth full review of Sora and dive deeper into the technical report over every feature, then just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to go over that. And also let me know your thoughts on Sora, where you think this technology is going, how you are going to be using it and so on. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the whole thing, but it is very exciting to see something new come out in the AI world. Now, if you like this video, please subscribe and drop a like. I would highly, highly appreciate it. And with that being said, I will see you in the next one.